everyone, it is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. And so today is super exciting because I am going to be joined by my friend Kevin, who is a graduate of Duke University and he's also on the pre-med track. He has just taken the MCAT and he is applying to med schools this fall. And additionally, if you all are interested in having your college application essays read or being on a one-on-one -on -one call with a UC Berkeley student, definitely check out Study Hall College Consulting. It just launched and we are a team of UC Berkeley students who will read your college application essay as well as do those one-on-one -on -one consulting calls. So if that sounds interesting to you, please check out our website and you can see all of the services that we offer. But without further ado, let's get started. Awesome. So it looks like we are on Zoom World now. I am joined by my friend Kevin, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. So um, hey, everyone. My name is Kevin, friend of Rachel from high school. Just as a quick introduction, uh, I went to Duke for undergrad and I studied computer science and then some pre-med things. Currently applying to med school, um, so specifically some MD PhD programs to study bioinformatics, CS, something like that. Kevin, you mentioned that you went to Duke for undergrad and you double majored in computer science and biology. And so I think that's like an interesting double major. Like, do you want to explain more about why you chose that as your double major? Just to backtrack a little bit, and in high school, I had a lot of interests in like biomedical sciences and research, um, as well as um, computer science. And so a hard choice for me to make for college admissions was to pick like a school that was really good at pre-med things or really good at CS things. So like I, I got into a few programs at the time, they're like direct med admissions that are like seven, eight years that give you your MD at the end, um, as well as like schools that are like quite good at computer science, but like very few schools I think are like really great at both. So with Duke, I ended up picking a school that I thought would leave my doors open. Um, what I didn't really realize at the time was that uh, this would actually help me like combine these interests later on. So in college, I've been able to do some really great research and work um, combining some of these interests in computer science and medicine. Um, and so that's kind of the stuff I want to work on in the future, like past undergrad. We talked before this and you noted that with Duke for college admissions, you get admitted to Duke University as a whole. It's not like by major or by like college or something that you want to attend. So I guess like, why did you pick Duke if you want to explain a little bit more about that? It was a lot about keeping options open. So it's really, really tough, I think when you're 17, 18 years old, trying to make these like major career decisions. So I'm, I'm really grateful that schools like Duke have left a lot of these doors open and let you be like very flexible with your academic path and trajectory. I know so many kids who like in college, they start out, I don't know, pre-med, but then they switch to law or finance afterwards. And I think until you start learning these things um, in a more rigorous way, it's really hard to know what you really want. So I, I'm super lucky that I was able to pick a school that that was that maximized my flexibility. I picked Duke because I wanted to leave my doors open. And what I didn't realize at the time is that by picking Duke, I opened myself a new door, I think at least, um, to combine these interests in a more research-centric way. So combining medicine and computer science to do like, computational biology research. That's super cool. I think even for me now, after graduating from college as well, I know I switched my major throughout college like four times. So definitely for high school students who are being forced or you have to pick a major or figure out what you want to do with your life. I think it's totally okay to just sit back and figure it out while you're taking classes in college. Like you don't need to have everything figured out right now. Yeah, for sure. I, I think for a lot of kids who like ask, hey, Kevin, you know, like what do, what, what do I still study in college, right? Um, and like they try to like map out their entire like 20 year plan at, at 18 years old at like when they're coming into college as a freshman and I think that's just so hard to do because life is like unpredictable I think it's good to plan ahead but like I, I wouldn't say lock yourself into a position right you know life is dynamic things change or interests change um so I think leaving yourself flexible is is usually a good thing so speaking of what activities did you get involved in? Did you participate in during high school that you think got you accepted into Duke? Yeah, high school. That's a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> so the main thing that I really um, doubled down in back in high school is research. The summer after sophomore and junior year, I did a full summer at the NIH doing research in two different labs. Um, that uh, I managed to be able to volunteer and an intern in. So that was my first exposure, I think, to research. It gave me my first taste of like what 
type of work I want to do in the future. So I, I really enjoy those experiences. And I think I know it's really hard to be able to enjoy in labs as an intern. My little brother is like trying to find like research to get involved in right now. And it's like really, really hard. But I, I think if you like are really persistent, um, it gives you a really awesome opportunity, one, to be able to develop yourself and your own interests. So you know what you want to do. And so to be able to help craft a story for yourself. I, I think the biggest thing in college uh, or in college admissions is being able to find like a good story to be able to go off of. And so for me, a lot of that was centered around research. Um, I did a lot of other things like hospital volunteering. Um, I helped start a hackathon on the CSI because I was really interested in helping other high schoolers get involved with um, their community in a way that um, is, is more impactful uh, by, by, by creating things. Um, so that's the general concept for the hackathon. Aside from that, just a lot of club leadership too. Um, I'm guilty of just like a lot of, I'm sure other like ambitious high schoolers were, where you kind of just like try and get as many leadership positions as possible for different clubs. I, I, I don't think that's a brilliant idea, but it's, it's somewhere to start because it shows you, you know, what type of things you're most interested in. So I, I think that there are certainly things that people do that help people get into college. But more important than all of that, I think, is finding a, yourself a story that is like really true to yourself and matches the school that you want to go to and just running with it. And so for me, that was a lot of like hospital volunteering work as well as research. Yeah, I agree with the high school club aspect. I definitely think with college admissions, it's more about depth rather than quantity. So like if you're going up in the leadership positions in your high school club, like president, vice president, treasurer, all of those versus joining 10 clubs where you're just a general right. member and you don't really like do anything in the club kind of thing. And so with the research, I think for me, at least, I didn't even know high school students could get involved in research before going to college. So do you have any tips for students? Because I feel like it's even difficult for college students yeah. to get research. So how can high school students get research? Yeah, for sure. So my answer to this changes depending on the type of research you want to do. So first off, I think it's hard for anyone. But I think if you email a lot of like local universities, professors, research institutions, and, and you just really go for a lot, um, I think that it's possible to get some few, a few hits. I think my big suggestions are one, to reach out to a lot of people, um, because the more people you contact, the more opportunities you have to be able to get involved. The second thing I'd suggest is to make sure that when you reach out, your emails aren't generic. Make sure that you're putting in the work to make sure that you actually want to work for these people. So what that means is not just sending a generic template to every single professor, but make sure that you're changing the email to be specific to the people you want to work for. So going out and doing a little bit of research on your own, seeing the type of work they do, seeing what recent papers they've published on, the topics that they you know, teach on, and see if any of that stuff interests you. Because there's no better source to learn from than the people actually doing the work themselves. And then I think my third big tip would be to try and tap into your network. For me, I didn't know a ton of people that did research in high school, but I definitely knew a few. And so I reached out to these people and asked them, hey, you know, I want to get involved with research. I know that you do it too. Is there any chance that you could talk to your PI, your lab manager, and see if there are spots available to get involved? More often than not, people are willing to help. In my case, I ended up not being able to find anyone that was, you know, able to come into labs, but they gave me really great tips as far as, you know, how to reach out to other PIs, which I ended up doing on my own and eventually found um, a, a few professors that were willing to work with me. Well, I will add this one extra point too. So especially in high school, there are a lot of programs out there, especially marketed towards like biomedical research that ask you to pay to be able to do work. Um, this is like actually a huge thing. And I'm not sure if other people know about it too much. But one of the most common things I see is that kids will just want to do research so badly that they'll apply for these programs that are specifically marketed towards like, hey, if you give me like $5,400, we'll put you in this camp where you'll be able to have the opportunity to do research. Are those a scam or like, are they actually valuable like learning experiences? I want to call them a scam because I think at the end of the day, they do give you what you're looking for. You do get the research experience. You do get to see what it's like to be on college campuses. Um, I just think that if you look hard enough, there are other ways to get what you want without having to pay that money. So me and Kevin, we were the same starting year in college, but Kevin did graduate from Duke one year early in 2019. So you, can you explain a little bit about how you graduated in three years doing a double major? Yeah, so let me start with a why first, because that kind of explains, I think, more of the how. School is really expensive. So for me personally, um, any kind of actions I could take in college to be able to reduce tuition or save money, I, I tried to do. So for me, the big money savers were being an RA, which you can relate to as well. In my case, graduating early. And so for us, 
the way that tuition works is that you play a flat fee essentially um, at the start of every single semester. And it doesn't matter how many credits you take. After my freshman year, I started trying to start taking more classes with the intention of speeding up and skipping out on part of senior year. Um, so that was part of the answer, but that wasn't the full thing. The other aspect is that I really enjoy classes, but it's not usually the best use of my time. I think there's a lot of things that you learn that you can learn on your own or you can find exciting in other ways. What I did think was worth was that my sophomore and junior years, I was spending like 25 hours plus in the lab every single week because I realized I really enjoyed research. So I decided to graduate a little bit early because if I'm going to spend my entire day doing research anyways, I might as well get paid as a research assistant or a technician rather than pay the university to skip classes and then go do research. The, the, the how of it is to plan ahead and start overloading on coursework, which is easier said than done. But there's a lot of, I think, unique tricks that you can employ. For Duke University specifically, I have no idea if this applies elsewhere. Independent research is something that is huge. Um, you can take independent research classes but the class itself is taught all by your uh, research professor that you do research with. Um, and so for me, it's two birds, one stone. I needed to do research anyways. I really enjoyed research. So if I could get class credit along the way, then I was going to go ahead and do that. And the last thing I'd have to add is I did do one semester of classes on, um, over the summer, and that could help accelerate the process a lot too. And they tend to be a lot cheaper than taking it uh, during the school year as well. They also might be harder because it's a condensed curriculum, but sometimes it's also not that much harder too. I know for a few classes I'm thinking of, especially in computer science and organic chemistry, the summer courses are like notoriously easier. Um, so ask your upperclassmen friends, see what they are talking about. I agree with everything you just said. I definitely think graduating like a semester or a year early in Kevin's case is doable. You just have to plan it really, really well. Kevin, my final question for you is, do you have any final advice for any high school students or college students who might be interested in going to Duke or applying for med school or even interested in computer science as well? Yeah, so it's a cliche answer, but I really think you should go with your gut in terms of trusting that the decisions you make are like in your best interest. So go out and, and, and you know, find the clubs that you think you actually enjoy, right? And don't just do things for clout or for, you know, to please your parents, to, to stack your resume. I think as long as you're making these choices as true to yourself as possible, you'll be happy with the results. One of the things that I hate hearing is like parents giving statistics about like, oh my God, you know, don't go to XYZ University because it turns out that 20% of kids that go there as pre-meds, only 20%, you know, go to medical school. That sounds really bad. And it sounds like the school like, like prevents you from going to medical school, but it doesn't. It probably just means that a lot of kids go there and find better opportunities, right? And so I think this is a huge misconception from a lot of kids. I think you should just go with your gut and find the things that you're really passionate about and just go for it no matter what. So this is the end of the video. Definitely make sure you like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content relating to college and lifestyle videos. I post every single Sunday and Wednesday, so check back then. So thank you all so much for watching and we will see you all next time.